Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board, August 22nd, 2022. Please call the order at uh, right on time, 6.30. Yeah. Miracles never cease, huh? Uh, first order business we have is approve the minutes of August 8th. I motion we approve the minutes of August 8th. Seconded. We have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the August 8th, 2022 minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, we have a 3-0 on that. Um, so we have the hearing. Is that a public hearing? Yes. You want to read the notices? Um, sure. So we, there were... We sent notices to the uh, property owners who had requested discontinuance of the flammable storage license um, at 11 Bridge Street and 54 Amherst Road. Neither of those, uh, both of those properties were formerly gas stations. Neither of them have operated as gas stations in a number of years. And so the owners have requested that the license um, be rescinded. So, so did, did the, the BOS issued those licenses, or are they licensed through the fire department? Uh, those are uh, select board licenses. Okay. Are the tanks still on the ground? Uh, the, I, Craig, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the one at 11 Bridge Street is. Is that right? There are no tanks in the ground. In okay. Washington. Thank you. Then all of them have been removed. So, so in, in our policy and procedures, do we address the, do we ask the question if the tanks have been removed? Um, we do not. You don't have, maybe we should. Okay. Let's add that, okay. That, that's why, that's why we, most of our documents are living documents because we should know. Yep. Okay. Hello, Mr. Warner. How are you tonight? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Thank you for showing up. Um, would you like to just so I will call the public hearing to order, and you uh, had it in notice in the uh, Greenfield recorder. You have the uh, um, receipts. We we sent certified letters to the owners, but um, it did not appear that there needed to be a okay. publication in the newspaper. Okay. Uh, Craig, you want us? Um, you want to uh, make comment? Uh, the only comment is I believe it was required for the underground storage tanks for uh, gasoline and diesel sales prior to our purchase. And we maintain those licenses, but we do not see any in the future. OK. Um, Nathaniel, Crystal, any questions? No. No. Appreciate it, Gordon. All right, Jeff, what does our procedure say we got to do next? Uh, public comment. Okay, opened up for public comment. Any comment about removable of flammable liquids, tanks, storage tanks? God, no one wants to talk about it. All right. No comments here, Jeff. Um, then select board deliberation and vote. Nathaniel, any comments? If they're not using the license anymore, I see no reason why we shouldn't discontinue them. Crystal? I am in agreement if they would like to I, I My only comment is that if we don't, I, I would say that to re, re, not to renew the license or we should basically make sure the tanks are not in the ground. Okay? Yep. And, and also on there, maybe we can have a sign off by the fire, to, the fire chief and or the um, building inspector. Okay? Yep. All right, without any other comment. So at this time, I'll, make, I'll entertain a motion that we uh, close the hearing. I motion we close the hearing. Seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, 3-0, close the hearing, deliberations.
Any more comments? Any anything needed? Okay, without hearing anything, I would entertain a motion to uh, discontinue the storage of flammable liquids at 11 Bridge Street and 54 Amherst Road. I motion we discontinue the licenses for flammable storage at 11 Bridge Street and 54 Amherst Road. Seconded. Motions made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey, we have a 3-0 vote to dis to discontinue the uh, flammable storage at 11 Bridge Street and 54 Amherst Road. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Tom. Okay, next up, appoint police officers as poll workers. Jeff? Yeah, so there was a recent change in state law. Previously, the police chief could assign police officers. Uh, the law changed it so that the select board now has to um, approve the assignment of police officers to work at the polls. Um, so the recommendation is that the select board um, move to approve a sufficient number of police officers for the polling locations um, and to designate the police chief the authority to assign specific officers according to scheduling and availability. Okay, so A, A. No, be quiet. <laughs> okay, so are we gonna, are we, are, is, are you and the chief recommending that we um, assign Appoint all the police officers in the department. Yeah. Right, we do. The, do we need to do it by name? Um, I I don't think so. I think you can say we similar to um, how we appointed the so I can enforcement officers. So I can I can entertain a motion that all sworn officers in the Sunderland Police Department can be poll workers, or po now poll walker poll workers. Okay, so I will entertain a motion that the sworn officers of the Sunderland Police Department will now be full-time and part-time will now be poll workers in the town of Sunderland assigned by the Sunderland Police Chief according to availability to work. All right. Well, well okay, go, that's fine. Do I have a second? Did you make the motion? Oh, I can. Could yeah. I, I motioned that what you said. And I seconded what you said. For discussion. <laughs> for discussion. Does this have to be negotiated with the union? It's uh, kind of a change of duty. I don't I don't believe so because they They already do that. The service. They already yeah. do it. It's just who requests them now yeah. is yeah. the change. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, I'm. I'm just wondering. I, I don't want to get in a bad situation. I'm just long enough. You, you understand. I know how it works. All right. So we have a motion made and seconded to appoint uh, duly licensed or sworn officers in the Sunderland Police Department full and part time as election workers in the town of Sunderland to be assigned by the police chief. Any just. Further discussion? So, yeah. go ahead. The only question I have is because we're doing this now today. So, say we get three new officers in when they're sworn in as regular officers. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. They also have to be sworn in as poll workers, also. And um, alcohol enforcement officers. All right. So, and we've just got that all kind of taken care of going forward so that next time. When there's a new officer and then. In yeah. June of next year, we'll just appoint them regularly. And yeah. yeah, but it's now part of the process. Okay. Okay, we have a motion made, seconded. Um, discussion seems to be finished. Any additional discussion? Hear no further discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero.
Anyway, next, transfer station discussion with Energy Committee. Energy Committee, front and center. You get the first, you get the first shot at, look at, this is nice, huh? Fancy stuff here. That's nice. Good job. Very <laughs> nice. Good evening. Um, I'm Aaron Fowle, I'm a member of the Energy Committee, along with David Goodwin, who's the chair of the committee. And if you've been looking at our minutes uh, over the last year or so, we've been doing some research on whether the town of Sutherland should seek to establish a transfer station in town. And now you may be wondering, what does that have to do with energy? Well, there is a direct connection between trash and energy. Um, there's an energy component to trash disposal. It uses energy to, to haul away trash and to dispose of it. Uh, recycling also uses a certain amount of energy, though much less than trash. So the less trash our town produces, the more recycling and the more reuse our town can manage, the greater uh, are the energy savings and the greater impact on climate change. So what we've been doing over the last year is um, making some site visits to other transfer stations. David will talk a little bit about that. We've had discussions with Jan Amin, who, as you know, is the executive director of the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. We've talked to some people at uh, DEP, the Department for Environmental Protection, and looked at various sites in town where this might happen. So uh, you know, the, the reason I think we're exploring this is, uh, as David will show in his PowerPoint presentation, um, this will not only save energy, increase the ability for reuse and recycling in town, but save uh, residents a lot of money. Um, it will be much cheaper to run a transfer station than it will be certainly for households to hire a private car, which they do now. It will also, we believe, be cheaper than the previous arrangement, which was municipal curbside pickup if by uh, local tax dollars. So um, with that preamble, I'm going to turn it over to David, who will talk about sort of our evolution in, in our research and uh, what the advantages are and, and uh, why we think this might be a good next step for the town. Great. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Select Board. So thinking about transfer stations here, you think about the kinds of activities that might possibly take place at a transfer station. And our area has a ton of them. Most of the towns in our area have transfer stations. A few don't. You know, I think of Waitley, Hatfield, Deerfield, Greenfield, Amherst, Northampton. All these towns have their own transfer stations. Uh, only a few, a handful of towns, Sunderland being one of them, has curbside pickup. So on this first slide, I've put together a few PowerPoint um, slides just to give you a, a brief visual representation of what we're thinking. <coughs> you know, obviously trash and recycling, I think one of the greatest things in a transportation is a take it or leave it, where people bring in stuff that they no longer need, that some other people need. And <laughs> my experience from a take it or leave it in Amherst is the second you're unloading this stuff from your from your car, there's someone there to take it. So it's really it's heartwarming to see things being used and reused. <coughs> Bulky items, compost, scrap metal, hazardous waste. Yeah, these are this kind of like the the whole menu item of, of various items that can go into a transfer station. Um, yeah, can I get the next slide done, please? So Leverett is a great example of a neighboring town that has a transfer station. Not only does it have all sorts of, of bins and, and things that they do at the recycling center and at the, at the um, transfer station, but it's also kind of a social gathering as well. And it's, it's, uh, it, it serves both Leverett and Shrewsbury, and I think is a really great local example. It's on a fairly large site, but, and they do lots of different types of things. Uh, but, but Leverett is, is, is a town that we've looked at, a town that we've talked to, got uh, budget figures from them, staffing, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a pretty good sense of what it takes to, to put together a transfer station of that magnitude. In Sunderland, we're not really trying to go this full lever model at this point. We can talk about that as you'll see what some of the limitations that we have are on land that's available to do something of this. So the next slide. Uh, yeah, Aaron kind of walked us through 
more or less the, uh, the short history of tra trash removal in Sunderland. Uh, before I got to town, uh, there was curbside pickup paid through, through property taxes. And then after two and a half, like Aaron said, uh, that service was discontinued, and then it was up to individual households to contract with waste vendors. That's when I came into to it. We had our choice of two or three different vendors, competitively priced. They've all been bought, bought out by USA Waste and Recycling, and prices have just gone <laughs> and up and up and up and up and up. So it's now, for at least for my service, uh, single family, four hundred and eighty dollars a year. So that uh, you multiply that times the number of households in town that might do this, you've got a pretty substantial chunk of money on the line that could make this. Could, could create a different model for waste and recycling. So yeah, next slide. So what I did is I went to the, the town's assessor's GIS database and just looked at all the various town-owned lands around Sunderland. It turns out there are 33 of them, as you can see by the, the blue dots on the map there. Uh, there we go. Um, <coughs> ideal transfer station site would be centrally located. Uh, it would be large enough to do all the things that you would want to do it. You would have easy vehicular access. Uh, you would have enough land. So uh, there's not too many parcels in Sunderland of the 33 parcels that the town owns uh, that actually suit our needs. I did a little filter here, and yeah, you can go to the next slide. There are really only two properties that you know weren't too small weren't up Mount, uh, Mount Toby and, and up uh, Middle Mountain Road or someplace, uh, weren't on the very edge of town. Uh, and, and so really, there's only a couple of properties that suit our needs here for transfer station. Uh, public safety complex there, number one, it's eight acres, uh, but obviously it has a police station, fire station, <laughs> highway department, uh, wastewater treatment plant on the back. So there's not a ton of usable space there, uh, but just doing a quick little GIS uh, assessment, it looks like there's about two acres. And I'll show you uh, an era photograph of the site with property lines and frontages and all that kind of stuff later. And a couple, I think maybe in the next slide or a couple slides from now that show where we're thinking about there. Uh, the other property up on Reservation Road is completely landlocked. You would have to get uh, build a road back there behind people's houses. Uh, that's right up near the Montague town line, right near um, Reservation Road, mm -hmm. yeah, well, Reservation Road. Uh, but that's almost seven acres. Montague Road is also up in that same northern edge of town. It's got a conservation restriction on it. It's a real beautiful piece of land as you come into town from the north under 47. So slapping a transfer station there would not be the most the most pleasing place to put it. Plus, it's I, I, really I think the town was part owner on that property. The town park is up on Reser, Res, no, um, he said part park owner. Road. Park Road, thank you. Part owner, he said. Oh, part owner. Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah, said. part, no, it's part, I, I thought it was part owner. I thought it was also owned. Maybe the town ended up buying it, but when, yeah, I, I know the part you're, you're talking yeah. about. Because there's a sign up there. Yes, there is. Yeah. Okay. We're on the right, I'm on the right page. Conservation okay. land, basically. Yeah. And the same thing with the um, Hubbard Hill property. It's only one and a half acres, but that's managed by the Conservation Commission. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. the Leonard Town Line. So mm -hmm. it really only leads two properties that we looked at. We had some meetings. I'll tell you about the meetings in a second here. But you know, the next slide. The Bell Hill Road site, it's two parcels to totaling more than 14 acres. You know, right off of Bull Hill Road, just to the east of the gravel pit, close to the Leverett Town Line. You can see the black town line there. So, it, so it's, it's not the most centrally located spot. Uh, it was used as a borrow pit or something at some point, because when you come off of Bull Hill Road down to it, it's a fairly steep road. The whole property's like a full Yeah, it's been That excavated. was used as a... Uh the police department use that as a firing range. Oh, do they? Well, it's a good spot for they, I don't know if they still do. I know they used to at one. Yeah. Well, there's also, I've, I believe I've heard two folks mention the possible solar field there. We, I think it would be a wonderful place for a solar field yeah. because there's nothing there. Right. And but there's so no, access. there's no transmission lines up there. Right. So I assume the nearest lines are right up on Bullhill Road. 
are houses across the street, so there must be power lines there. Yeah, but they're not they're not transmission, they're distribution lines, not transmission right. lines. That that and you need something a little more substantial. Yeah, but I I think that a transfer station and a solar field would work together. Right, I do too. And with fourteen acres. Yeah. It might it might be a possibility. So this this is one site that we considered. And then we went to the public safety complex. The next slide. And this one is eight acres. You can see the wastewater treatment plant there to the west. You can see the public safety complex to the east. And the land in the middle mm. is undeveloped. It's about two acres. It's, I measured it like 2.07 acres or something like that. If you went all the way out to the power uh, to the property boundaries on the north and south. Um, you go to the next slide. I think this is my. Oh, yeah. So we've had a couple. Of, yeah, keep that one up for a second. Can I okay. ask a quick question? Please do. Do you um, happen to know how how large the lever transfer station is? The usable part that they're actually using is acreage wise. Yeah. I, I don't, but I can easily find that. Okay. Just because that would give us a good idea of, of what size we're looking at. Yeah. Needing I'm for this. I'm thinking maybe five five acres. Okay. Would you have a better sense of that? Smaller than that. Smaller. Yeah. Yeah, it does not seem very, I've been up there a bunch, and it does not seem huge. So I, I think the two acres here for something we're talking about for our uses would be, would be plenty. Well, we've been encouraged to use this site, and here are the meetings. So we've had a couple of, we've had three meetings. Uh, one, the first one on May 20th with the Energy Committee, we, we looked at the public safety complex site and the Bull Hill site, Bull Hill Road sites to assess them. Mm -hmm. On June 1st, uh, three of the Energy Committee members met with Janet Mean, Frank McKenna, Solid Waste Management District uh, Coordinator, uh, and George Emery, and all of them preliminary su preliminarily supported that two-acre parcel as being big enough for what we needed to do, probably. We couldn't do, you know, the whole menu item that I showed you on the first slide of, you know, all the things, but we could certainly do trash recycling and perhaps a couple of other things. Um, plus, three-phase electricity goes right through that property. It goes from the road past uh, the highway department, past this site, down to the wastewater treatment plant. So that's a big plus because you need power to run your compactors and things of that nature. So that was, that was a big thumbs up from those folks. Uh, then two weeks later, we met with that same, well, with Jan, same members of the Energy Committee and two guys from the DEP um, who you know, were, were trying to find out, well, do you have any, any red flags you want to throw out at us right now before we get into this any further? And they said that, um, that we would need a 100-foot setback from the two adjacent properties there. So the total frontage there and the width of the property pretty much from, from east to west is, I think, about 346 feet. So that takes out a pretty good chunk of the land already. But you can get a waiver if you get both property owners or one property owners or both property owners to sign off on it. And then the, the last slide, I don't go there yet, but the last slide shows who the landowners are. Both of those properties are in the APR program. Um, so it's not like people are living there and they would be aggrieved by having a transfer station there necessarily, at least that's my hope. Um, so I think the, that a waiver is a possibility here. Uh, the other requirement they said is that they can't be currently, they should not be located on prime forest, prime farmland prime soil, which this actually is. But DEP is in the process of rewriting the regulations and they felt that that was a requirement that was going to be removed, but they didn't have that, they ha that had not been done yet. So that's something for us to monitor, because if it is, if that uh, regulation stays in there, uh, I don't think that DEP would ever approve of us putting a transfer station there, even though it's <laughs> sandwiched in between a wastewater treatment plant and a public safety camp. It's not being used for agriculture. It, yeah, not being used for agriculture. The other um, attractive thing about the public safety complex site is its central location in town. It's easy road access uh, for both you know, vehicles of townspeople disposing of you know, trash and recycling, and also the trucks that need to get in there to haul away the big containers. 
the Bull Hill Road site would make both of those things rather difficult, especially the big trucks coming in because of this grade <laughs> of that. That's right. And uh, during the winter, even normal vehicles would have some trouble getting in there. It was also the added benefit of there being sort of built-in security rather than having to worry about like off hours dumping and things like that. The police station's right in the front. You know, it, you can't get much better than that for built-in security. That could be a big plus for sure. For yes. Security purposes. And uh, yeah, uh, Jan also, or maybe the DP guys, raised the idea that the elevation of the raised reed bed there uh, beat it to the west of the site towards the wastewater treatment plants and it's elevated maybe seven or eight feet could be used to the advantage of having cars drive up there put the, the dumpsters down below and then people could dump into it rather than having to climb up ladders to put the garbage in so they thought the site actually lends itself pretty well to this sort of operation so if you go to my last slide here this just shows the property uh, without the photo background showing approximately where we're thinking about this. This is the little over two acre parcel there in the red box. The two property owners north and south there are listed. Um, and the last issue that has been raised is, and I, you see there written uh, on the left is actually from um, Fire Chief Steve Benjamin, who's a little concerned that it's being used as an emergency helicopter landing site, because I asked him if that would would be a, a no-go for him if we were to put a, a transfer station there because it would preclude the helicopter emergency landing thing. So he said, uh, we, have not, we have not had to use it lately, but we have used it in the past. In addition, and this is news to me, live fire training occurs in the trailers on the blacktop pad behind the salt shed. Uh, depending on where the transfer station would be situated, there might be room for everything provided that the transfer station doesn't allow for debris to blow around from the propeller wash. So, as far as we know, these are all the objections that have been raised. These are, this is the support that we have received on it. And before we proceeded any further with it as an energy committee, we just wanted to pass it before you folks and get a sense of, of is this something you think that Sunderland might want to pursue, or should we drop it immediately? And, Spend our time doing other things. So when Sun, when Sunland unfortunately had to do away with the uh, the trash that we had, they we had looked into a transfer station exactly in that area. Oh, you had okay. Had not heard that. It, well, that that's I forget all the details, but but what we what we had is the person that was running the had the company that was running the Hadley transfer station at that time came up and put some numbers together and it would and it would work in that area okay. and for all the reasons that you said i mean those um at that time i don't think that area was used as a helicopter landing site um but i mean the chief has said that has said that before but we had looked at that but when they came up and they i i think that when we originally went to the curbside pickup was probably like a hundred eighty, two hundred dollars a year for do for doing it. I think so. Yeah. And again, it was it's been a while. Um, and the cost of doing the transfer station was going to be quite a bit more than that. But I'd like to see what the numbers are. If you were to multiply it out by households, it would be more. Yeah. So it so it would be great to see. I I, it, I applaud the, the 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 effort because, um, I we as a board have been hearing more concerns about the cost of provi and, and matter of fact, one of the there was from a one comment um, that was 100% supportive of the trash pickup, believes now we should really look at doing something differently. So yeah. I, it, it's, it's not out of the realm. Okay, well, two things I would mention. One is people could still have curbside pickup if they wanted to, even if we did have a transfer station. Yeah, because they do in Lever, too. Yeah, two, the way most of these transfer stations are modeled, people buy a yearly sticker 
and then they pay for each bag or each item that they bring. So it does generate some revenue. It may not be a break-even kind of thing in the long run, but it does bring in revenue. And that, you know, I couldn't tell you exactly how much to expect, but if we talk to some of the other towns or at Jen, we'll probably have some better numbers. It's not a net loss for sure. Jen's an amazing person to deal with. I mean, yeah. we've always had tremendous tremendous information when 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 we did the pay for throw and when we were buying the bags and stuff like that when she first started that I, I mean we did I I thought we did a lot of and and she liked what we were doing because we actually got we were actually getting a pretty high uh, recycling rate because people could recycle they didn't have to do anything special and the volume of crash went, went down Right. It, it was it was a good thing, but then and then then when we and then then we started paying for per throw by bag per throw, it was even better for our recycling rates because people now were having to pay, so we got better returns. Right. Um, well, she emailed me uh, this afternoon and asked, "What's the status of the transfer station?" I said, "Well, we're meeting with the select board tonight." She said, "Oh, I wish I could come." Yeah, she, she's she's very. Meeting, so. uh, she she's definitely she invested in us too. Yeah, and 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 I I wish. You know, we used to have twice a year bulky item days. Um, it just got prohibitively expensive for us to do it by ourselves. Although, I mean, we can still go up to Greenfield Transfer Station, right. and pay. And, and and I remember I did. Took out a rug, and. With a 12 by 12 wall to wall rug, and they said just cut it up into four foot sections. And it, and it wasn't that hard, and it cut it up, and it was like they charged like each roll was like four dollars to get rid of it. So it was a very, it's very affordable, you know, for their bulky item. But we see, we see more stuff being thrown out beds, chairs, desks. So well, that's why I love the idea of take it or leave it. So that I know. And use that stuff. And the one in Leverick gets used a lot. That one's place is constantly coming and going. There's also I don't I think I don't think we should understate how important it is for the community of a town to have a place like that where people meet up regularly. Um, I know that when people run for office in this area, like when Natalie was running for state representative, um, you, there's nowhere in Sunderland to sit around and collect signatures. You have to kind of just go around to random places to find them, whereas in Deerfield and in Leverett, you can just go sit in front of the transfer station all day, and there's all your signatures you need. Um, and there, there is definitely something about that, having a couple days a week where it's open, people come and they, they talk to each other, they, they meet each other. It's a great place for people to be able to hand out literature for, you know, the, the millionaire's tax or something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's a, there, there's more than just trash pickup that happens at transfer stations, and I can't speak highly enough of, of how that ties together a community. My understanding of the financials is that a smaller transfer station such as Waverly's, which is maybe where Sunderland would start out, um, their annual budget is 60000 but that's offset again by the sticker fees, the fees, and other dumping fees. Leverett, which is a much larger station, I think, their budget is something on the order of 85000 and again, that's offset by, uh, by the fees they charge. The other thing about Leverett's transfer station um, is that it's, they make extensive use of volunteers to, to run. They do have a few paid positions, but many of the uh, people that work there are, are community volunteers. How many days a week is Leverett open? Um, you know? Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, three days a week. And how about Waitley? Probably less frequently. I know the Greenfield one is open about five days a week. Yeah, they're open every single except for Mondays and All Sundays, I believe. Oh, no, I was asking how often Waitley's open. Just, you know, three days a week, two days a week. Doesn't matter. Yeah, something like that. The way Liberty does it is that the Saturday and Sunday are like morning hours. And then the Wednesday is in the evening, so especially in the summer, it's open until like 8 p.m. or something like that, so people after work can, can make that, um, which makes it a little more convenient. Okay, gents, what do you want to do next? Tuesday and Saturday. Well, I guess we're just 
we're just trying to get some feedback here to see if this is something you folks would support, at least in theory, for us to move forward and take the next step. I do have one other question that is, if it turns out that this is not feasible or there isn't enough interest or, or for whatever reason this falls, falls through, um, has Energy Commission thought about talking with Leverett or with Waitley about having a, a, a deal with them? I know that Shootsbury, um, for example, does Leverett. With Jan and me and she said it's unlikely to happen. Okay. But they already yeah. have a, an agreement with Shootsbury and they're not interested in expanding further than that. Fair enough. Right, the woman who's the transfer station coordinator from Leverett came to our, one, our first, one of our first meetings about this topic. And, and she said, <laughs> she just what Aaron just said. Yeah. Which is fair, but yeah. I forget to ask. Yeah. So, yeah, take the next step. Okay. It sounds like you're giving us more or less a green light here. Is, am I reading this correctly? Uh, I, uh, personally, I would say it's a, it's a worthwhile endeavor. Um, I, I guess I, I would, I, I, I think we could, we, we can address the land issue to, to that. That's probably not, not as important. But we we need to start, kind of. I would think need to kind of put putting a budget together to find out. And and so, so like, you know, down on my brother in law's place down in North Carolina, you they got white glass, green glass, brown glass, uh, cardboard, white paper, <laughs> metal. I mean. It's, and, and then if we're also in the transfer station, but we also would take trash, right? Is that what you're yeah. still? Yeah, of course. See, and, and the trash component is trying to find how we would do that long term. Because I think a lot of landfills are starting to close and it's, it's getting more difficult. So we'd have to kind of work with a company I, I, you know, I, 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 it always bothered me, and I don't know, if, and probably you guys also, but when you saw four different trash companies rolling through the town of Sunderland, yeah. you know, one, one was on Tuesday, two were on Wednesday, and then, a, uh, then there was a Thursday. Yeah. And it's like, geez, that doesn't seem like where we used to have one company came into the entire town. Now it seems it'll be a little better because now there's, now, now, they're doing one truck versus multiple trucks. So right. I think that's better, I think. But the prices have gone up. Right. And I think, so we start have to have, to have an idea the, on what we would be paying per ton, you know, I, I would think. Yeah. Now, now <coughs> is, is Nathaniel, is, is Leverett transfer station trash and everything also? Oh yeah, it's, they, they've got, um, trash. They've got containers for recycling, cardboard recycling, uh, and then there's also sheds for uh, like household goods, take it or leave it. There's like a clothing one. There's like a books and games one. Um, they have composting there. Um, electronics. electronics too. Yeah. Yep. Um, the whole yeah, it's, it's the the whole gambit. See, I, I would I would think if you there'd be strength in numbers. So if if we stayed with the Franklin County Solid Waste. You would think that they would have a contract with a rubbish hauler, trash, whatever. They go through the Springfield Merc, and I think there's a hauler connected with them. For recycles, I, yeah, the, the recycle I'm not I'm not so much worried about. Although lately, I I think the uh, price of paper went right in the tank, um, where they used to pay used to pay us for putting paper. Now they're wanting you to pay them. Right. Um, fluctuates. I know. I, I mean, you you look at uh, uh, look at aluminum. It's it's like aluminum and glass are amazing things to recycle. It's like you use it, to make aluminum the first time is like what twenty four or twenty. It's like to to reuse an aluminum can is so little energy compared to making an aluminum can. Okay. So in our last energy committee meeting, we said, let's start working on some budget numbers for yeah. this proposal. And we decided to come here first before we did that. 
just so we wouldn't waste our time. I, so I don't think, personally, like I don't think you guys are wasting your time. I think it's a wonderful yeah. endeavor. Great, great. Well, I appreciate that. In my opinion. Yep. And in terms of the future, if, if the, the cost to, to haul goes up, well, the cost to haul for U.S. recycling is also going to go up also, and they're going to just charge the town more money. It'll go from 480 to $600 or something like that. So whatever is going to happen is going to happen regardless of where our trash is going. Um, so I would say that, you know, there's a, there's a certain amount of collective bargaining that goes into having a transfer station versus, um, especially, again, a, a company that has a monopoly in town that doesn't have any competition. And that, I think you know. that's kind of the problem here right yeah. now. And I also say that in addition to hearing people complain about the fiscal costs of all this, um, I've heard more than, more than a handful of people complain about the um, professionalism and operation that, that USA executes their, their trash pickup with. Um, and again, there's no, there, there's no. Oh, I'll just go to a different company. Then you don't have a choice to do that. So, but trash would definitely be a part of the equation here because I think USA recycling doesn't even charge for recycling. Pickup. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, so it's, it's just trash. Financial incentive if we, if we didn't include trash. Yeah, no, trash is definitely the the key here for sure. Ah, uh, so, um, what if you sense from? Do you get sense on the board? You, I mean, we can take a vote. Or no, I, I'm totally encouraged by this. Now, does South Deerfield have a transfer station? Mm -hmm. yeah. They do. Okay. And do we know? So I'm just, you know, bef wondering if there's other towns, you know, like Nathan mentioned us going in with Leverett, which obviously isn't an option if there were other towns in the area, but it doesn't sound like... I think transfer stations are pretty parochial. They Especially the smaller ones, they would be overwhelmed by suddenly having twice the amount. <laughs> well, you think Sunderland right. versus Leverett. I mean, Sunderland 3,000 plus. Right, you know. but you're saying Schutzberry and, and Leverett are, you know, working together for theirs. That's why I was just wondering before, you know, if there was that possibility of working with another town on this. But well, we could approach South here. But if they already have one, there's... They do, but they might, you know, they might be happy to have us join it. I don't know. You haven't asked. Yeah. No, I, I was thinking more so having it here if there was someone else who wanted to come and help offset ours. But it doesn't sound like there's any re real close neighboring town. There is upper limit of the total tonnage, I believe, of trash that you can put through a transfer station with DEP before it kicks into some sort of higher standard. And with Sunderland, just as Sunderland in, in the transfer station, we'd be well below it. But if we start adding the yep. towns, we might not be. I read somewhere in my notes, but I forget exactly what it is. I don't know what the threshold is. Yeah. Uh, but they said, no, you're way below that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I, I'll never forget process. talking to Claire Higgins, the mayor, former mayor of Northampton, about what her what what one thing most surprised her on the job, right, about being mayor? And she said, the knowledge about trash. <laughs> she said she never knew she had to know so much about, and I, I, and I just think it's funny, it, it, because those, it's those things that always get you that, what do I have to know as a member of the board of the suck board, what do I have to know about trash? Who knew well, trash was so complicated? It is. It's very well. It's a big. It's a big. It's a big business. Yeah. And and you and if, and the only thing you had to do was if you ever sit on uh, on Route 90 and watch all those trucks heading out to Seneca Falls, where they're taking what 8,000 tons of trash a day, to understand somebody's making money off trash. Oh, yeah, that's a conversation I would also be interested in having. Would be whether Sunderland, South Deerfield, and Deerfield would be interested in, and Waitley would be interested in doing a regional trash thing, the way we have regional EMS and regional other services um, for cost-cutting measures. You know, yeah. a larger one would essentially have a, a smaller per, per bag, per person cost. Um, and that's obviously going to depend on where, how close we are to that limit you're talking about. If we're just underneath it, that's one thing. If we're yeah. talking about we're a quarter of it, we have the room to be able to talk about that. Well, uh, luckily, someone like Jan is around to help us with stuff like that, and she's yeah. always happy to. So. But see, that's, that's the problem with the thing, I think, is that trash stations are, are, are something that you don't want to drive a long ways to. 
Like I said, I, I go to Greenfield. I don't have a problem going to Greenfield to drop off my rug or refrigerator or bed or whatever. But I know, you know, people that won't drive to Greenfield to drop off that those items. They'll just have pay somebody to come take it from them. Well, and, and you're looking at two different scenarios, right? You're going to drop off a bulky item occasionally for someone to go weekly to drop off trash is mm -hmm. is a much different thing and yeah. you know i know i personally wouldn't want to drive to greenfield with my trash in the back of my car <laughs> no, it has to be convenient for people and the other Correct. consideration is we don't want people driving large distances for ecological reasons either I mean, that's, Correct. That yeah i i hoping that this will be an energy and climate win Putting more miles on your vehicle going trash by yourself is not, not the way to go. Yeah, I want to do a, a comparison analysis of the trucks that go around versus individual households and see how that balances. Well, we're hoping that people yeah. will not make special trips to go to the transfer station, that they'll uh, arrange it so they, they're doing some other errands and will stop off on the way, or perhaps several households will pull together uh, a trip. And that, that would be my other, my, my one concern is that now you got people driving their cars to drop off trash versus one truck going. Right. So it might be more energy efficient well, to do the truck. We don't know. I don't know. That truck goes all the way to the middle. <laughs> yeah. I know. But my, yeah. So I, I, I think I, I, I would say that the board has a very positive. Okay. A very positive. What it's, it's not, it's not a wasted exercise. Let's put it that right. way. I, I think it's a very it's a very laudable goal right now. Yeah, good. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank thank you guys for doing the work. Sure. Excellent. Nice job, Aaron. All right, Jeffrey. Um, insurance advisory update. How's that looking? Um, it is good. We have uh, all the. Um, recommendations except I need to reach out to uh, retiree and um, I've got some names so I'll be doing that this week so hopefully this was the way I understand the process is the groups actually select who's going to represent them and then the select board would appoint the people that have been selected so my hope is that at the next meeting um, I will be able to present that list and for appointment, and then we can start meeting. How deep is your retiree list? I think I have three or four names. Oh, good. So do you have a good. few more? No, I personally couldn't even come up with anyone, okay. so I'm glad you had that many names. I, 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 I've known a few. Some of them are my teachers. <laughs> So that, that was the only update that, that we're hopefully going to be appointing next time and um, starting to meet. No, I, I, I did the right way to do it. Perfect. Just comments? No, I'm just here to listen. Good. Um, anything else, Nathaniel, on that? No, I'm just uh, happy that we're moving forward and getting that taken care of. Chris, all set? I'm all set. Okay. Select board updates. I'm enjoying this last part of summer with no additional meetings, although okay. this week Nathaniel? we start our first ones. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm so glad that it's so much less humid and hot than it was the last time we came in here to meet. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a plus for us. Um, I don't have anything big on the, on the agenda today. Okay. Um, we, South County Senior Center, had a informational aid evening slash cruise food truck slash uh, fiddle player slash a lot of slashes in there uh, uh Jen <laughs> Jen jennifer does a lot of when jennifer gets you she she makes sure that you're going to do something so uh they, that was last week and that went over that that was a, a really good, really a really positive, and and there was actually a lot of people going to learn um, in, in the informational booth 
she had a bunch of inch and like they had the town nurse the um triad they, they, there's a there was a whole number of different uh groups there and there was people and i saw a number of our residents that were there getting information that that was not easily obtained so it, it was a very it was a very very good i, I and i i talked to jen and commended her on the work that she was doing because it it's it's needed and and hopefully she's going to try to make it a more make it more often make it happen more often so we're scheduled for a meeting next monday with the uh, deerfield board to discuss the uh, uh awarding of a grant for a study on the senior center um, and they're reviewing the there's are they still reviewing the uh contract for the yeah, I think there was um, communication back and forth last week, and I need to follow up with Deerfield to see exactly where that is. But okay. There has been communication on that. Okay. Um, so that so that that's good. Um, I I just think that uh, what what they're doing right now in. I had a telephone call about, I, I also asked Jen to look into regional, formalized regional senior centers in the state so that we can, um, we can apply for money as a region versus a separate towns. I think we'd have, and I think our numbers would look more favorable if we we're doing it by a region. And also, I think that if we happen to have to put a building up or a structure, I think we we need to do it a different model than what we're using right now. Not one town should feel that they are responsible for a building. It should be our re it should be a, our, the three towns that are in the group should be responsible, not not just a town. In my opinion. Okay, Jeffrey. Um, Town of Ministry updates? Um, just three things. Uh, the first is that the water commissioners met last week and <coughs> voted to implement a mandatory water ban for water district customers that begins tomorrow and goes through the end of October. Um, they looked at the aquifers that they draw water from and they've noticed that they're down and they need some time to recharge. So um, as people know, we're, we're in, I think, a severe drought at this point in our region. Um, so this is one measure of just not don't water your lawn um, to help the aquifers uh, raise up a little bit. And it's only lawn watering. Only lawn watering. Correct. Okay. Yep. Vegetable garden, things like that can all be. This is the information I okay. have. Okay, no, I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, and I think, I believe we talked about this once before, and, you know, people had suggestions like, if you have a dehumidifier, and Nathaniel was talking about the humidity, you can take that water and throw it on your lawn. It's not, you know, it's recycled water, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some strategies, but I wanted people to be aware of that. Um, there was a reverse 911 call that went out today. There's information on our website as well. Um, so, but people can feel free to, to call us if they have questions. Um, the second is that this Friday from 3.30 to 7 p.m. there's going to be a vaccination clinic, a vax bus at Deerfield Elementary School. Um, information's on the website. People are encouraged to uh, RSVP before they show up and to make an appointment. Um, Those hours have been extended now. Pardon? They're going to stay open to 7.30, I believe, now. They're oh, are they? They're going to try to stay open to 7.30. Great. Um, and then the last thing is uh, just that next Tuesday is primary day. So if you haven't voted by mail, um, the, the polling location is at the Sunderland Public Library um, all day. And, and I would just add that sometimes people people don't think voting in the primary is important, but it is probably the most important because the people that vote in the primary 
you have to win the primary to get in the general election. So I, w I would say if you're not happy with the way things are going, you need to ask yourself, have you voted in a primary election late? And if you haven't, you may, you may say it's probably a pretty good idea to vote in the primaries. I had a question about the Vax bus. I know that they're um, doing doses down to age six months. Do we know if the Vax bus will come back in the next weeks or months for the subsequent doses if somebody's starting a child? We don't know. Okay. Yeah, I, I get an email. Okay. <laughs> hey, we're having a clinic. Yeah. Can you put it out? Um, I, I would hope so that they can get the follow up, but I'm not sure. Thanks. When I, when I spoke to Carolyn, Car Carolyn today, I think. I think that she is always trying to get the Vax bus back in the area, and probably as it's getting closer to the fall time, there's probably a greater em emphasis going to be on getting the Vax buses out. But and I would also tell people, don't be afraid to go to, or call up uh, Walgreens or or CVS or or your own doctor. Because the shots are available right there, also. But let because let's not forget about vaccinations. We still need to get them. Okay. Anything else, Jeff? That's it for me. So Jeff, nice job on the. Uh, seems that we're making good progress, huh? I think so. Were, you were all able to see that TV. Was this one visible to the audience? That's okay. Great. So where's the camera coming from? That's right there in front of you. Eye. That little owl looking thing. And it also looks out into the audience too? Yeah. It has a whole the, bunch of little the, cameras. There, if I can wow. pin this. Um, so this is the 360 degree view up here of everybody. And then Miss Corwin would talk and it'll focus on her and she'll get one of these big things or whoever's in the audience. So. Wow, very nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a great little device. Okay, and, and, and now if somebody asks us how much it costs to outfit a meeting room, we can tell them what it would cost to get all the, right? Yep, absolutely. I think with two screens, it was 7000 so what does a school do, do now for their meeting? They, they're, they're just FCAT? I believe, and Google Meet, right? We've remained remote. Um, that was the question on my mind. Is this, a, is this setup available to other boards? Could school committee meet here? Um, if it's available, I don't... Well, thank you. What, what would it... What, we 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 wouldn't need to have these large screens, right? But what would it cost if you had a smaller screen? You know, a a screen. You probably get by with a screen, one of those, right? Can can you just can you work it up, and and maybe we could if if there's like the school or someone else with a remote meeting, we could do that because. Right. I, I mean, I, again, the more, the the more, the better, as far as that. Right. But you, yep. There's other. I mean, you need a computer and things like that too. It's not just. Right. But those are the three things you need: is the owl, the computer, and and a screen, um, to display it. Um, see what, yeah, I could certainly see what see what you know. Work up a price, and 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 see because I think you know. It'd be nice to have because, and it's in especially if it could go, especially if it could go portable. Yeah, I mean, I think this is pretty portable, at least within the building, because it's on the carts and you just can drag it around. And I, I assume the school would want a similar setup so they can be in the library, go into classroom, go into the gymnasium if there's a big meeting or something like that. Um, so yeah, I could certainly, certainly work that up, and then. You know, based on on what we paid, and then say, hey, if you're looking for a smaller TV, I mean, I know you can buy 
pretty large TVs for a thousand dollars at Costco or something um, that don't have. I mean, these are these are actually really fancy that you can. Oh, oh it's the t it's a touch screen, but <laughs> it's running out of the computer, and I haven't figured out how to get the computer to recognize. So we're not it. using it any longer. We are not. Nope. Good. I, I that because of the, the the voice on that was very good. Yeah. No, I um, when Craig was talking and it was very easy to hear. Yep. And I I um, texted Cindy and asked her how how it was from her end, and she said she could hear everybody here too. So I think. So the only the only thing we'll need to know is we'll need to uh, while somebody's talking on the screen, put people in in different locations and see how they hear them also. Right, that'd be my only only thought. So we want to make sure people in the chairs can hear also. Yep. Okay. All right. Any questions? You ready? I motion we adjourn. Wow. Seconded. I thought you want to stay here forever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Motion made. Seconded to uh, adjourn this fine evening. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Jeff, we have a 3-0 vote, and call us out at 731, please.